There's a problem in this world. Culture is dying. It's being sacrificed. Languages are going extinct. Traditional practices, methods of creating, people's ways of life, heritage, cultures, identities, they're being lost. But not everywhere. No, in some places, there is still a passion, still a fight. There's still a fire lit to protect the sacred, to keep and preserve the cultures that define us. Hello, my name is Dr. Manuel Montoya. I'm an associate professor uh, at the Anderson School of Management at the University of New Mexico. And I'm proud to be faculty advisor of International Business Students Global. Uh, they are, in my estimation, some of the best students I've ever worked with in my life. And we're here in South Korea as part of the World Folk Art Movement. IBSD, or International Business Students Global, is a group of globally-minded um, undergraduate and graduate students from the University of New Mexico tackling issues of global legibility that manifest themselves in a lot of different ways. Since I've been working with uh, IBSG, I've noticed a couple things, and that is an unparalleled passion uh, and a drive to work for humanity. The purpose of our exploratory trip here is to evaluate the possibilities of doing a pop-up market in South Korea in Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympics. Six students and myself are uh, part of a larger team uh, out of UNM uh, that are exploring now the possibilities of what a pop-up market or an art-based e-commerce type of installation would look like uh, at the Pyeongchang Games in 2018. So our desire is to bring a pop-up folk art market to Pyeongchang's Olympics. This project started in early 2015 when I got invited to a meeting about working with the Federation of Indigenous Brazilians in Brazil. And that consulting project uh, talked about marginalization at the hands of mega events. We saw a lot of the backlash from the way that the indigenous people in Brazil were treated. We kind of saw an opportunity to continue the work and set out on doing a follow-up trip ahead of the Rio 2016 Olympics. During our research for that trip, we started developing the idea to have a folk art market at the Olympics. And now I'm sitting on a rooftop in Seoul with phase two of this project, which is to bring a folk art market here to the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics in Korea. Our main inspiration is the International Folk Art Market in Santa Fe, the world's largest folk art market. It's a huge event that raises $3 million in 21 hours, with 90% of that money going back to the artists and their local communities. We have artists from over 100 countries represented at the market, and it's, it's truly magic. What we're trying to achieve here is a small, practical iteration of a curated space that works in the spirit of what the folk art market tries to achieve. Our idea at UNM was to replicate this magic, to replicate it on a global stage like that of the Olympics. It makes a lot of sense. Traditional art forms are so important to global culture, and so doesn't it make sense to showcase that and showcase the best artisans in the world at one of the biggest places where the world comes together? We really want to create a physical space that you enter into. So picture walking into a fully enclosed tent that's flooded with art and culture from a local community and it's overwhelming in, in the best way that overwhelming can be and there's tapestries on the walls and paintings in the corner and beautiful jewelry draped across and it's just this really encompassing three-dimensional space. We've now been working on this project for several years and South Korea uh, has been a very very surprising uh, and exciting dynamic uh, place for us to visit. Any good book, the setting is really intentional and there's, there's no accidental setting and there's no accident that we're here in South Korea either. It's not simply a matter of the next Winter Olympics will be held here in, in the Pyeongchang province, but South Korean and Korean culture has a component of art and cultural preservation embedded into the very fiber of it. South Korea was a very intentional decision for us to want to implement our first market, largely because 
of how embedded aesthetics and beauty is in South Korean culture. South Korea is the pioneer of so much in the terms of culture as well as in terms of its technological advances. And as we see those two things, we tend to think from an outsider's perspective that they would be at odds with each other. But the way Koreans seem to handle their past and their future is it's striking and it's inspiring. And I think that is a model for how we should uphold our own culture. What we take in terms of the digital world does not need to come at the cost of the physical and our, our heritage. So we came to South Korea on a mission. We're here to build partnerships, to establish relationships. Realistically, I think a pop-up market at the PyeongChang Olympics in 2018 is very doable, especially because of the pride that Koreans have in their own culture and in their own traditions. I think we'll have more than enough support um, for our argument that art really does matter. And I think we've seen that since we've been here in South Korea is that that argument that we're trying to make, that art matters, that art saves, has been not only well received, but so naturally understood. Art saves for us means a couple of things, right? The, uh, the first is that it in a very real way saves lives. As a member of the board of directors for the International Folk Art Alliance, I've worked with tremendous artists, but none so as inspiring as those who are using art as a vehicle, not just to promote economic development and sustainability, but are fighting for human dignity and are fighting a battle for their own independence and their right to cultural self-determination. Concept Art Saves is not just saving lives, but really how these artists have become guardians of traditions while at the same time um, making sure that their human dignity and their bodies are taken care of and sustained. When you buy a piece of art, you not only buy a piece of object, you buy a piece of culture, tradition, and community. And so art saves, literally saves lives. Art literally saves lives. And so art saves is also about saving communities. It's about saving economies. And it's about creating economic sustainability, viable economic sustainability. I think one of the real messages of this project is that art does not have to die. Culture does not have to die. This world that we're entering into every day, one step closer to it, our next future, it does not have to come at the cost of our past. And I think that when every time we look into what has been, we learn about what can be. Our art and our culture and our heritage are our teachers. And any way that we can honor and showcase that and continue to learn from it, we will be better prepared for our future. And really, that's what this Art Saves movement is all about. It is saving the art, which is so critical to people's identity, their sense of existence, their realities, and their communities. So historically, Koreans have been conquered by larger, more powerful Asian countries in history. And because of that, Koreans have developed, I think, a really unique resilience. And that resilience is fueled by their art and their tradition. And being able to carry bits of traditional culture even into modern time. We've read about it, but being here the last couple of days and the next week, you see it, you breathe it. Um, you experience it, and we're so excited to have this as the place for the pilot of this pop-up market for the World Folk Art Movement. There's a natural connection between nature here and the architecture and culture and visual art and creation, and so we're very excited to kind of have the first pop-up market here at the South Korean uh, Games in 2018. I think we're here ultimately to conceptualize in a very meaningful, clear, and tangible way what a pop-up market would look like. Our long-term goal is to reach out to partners wherever there are mega events, and we're going to try to create these, um, these pop-up spaces at mega events all over the world for the foreseeable future. So that's really what the World Folk Art Movement is doing, is we're creating a global stage um, that will allow us to showcase folk art's power as a, a driver of cultural preservation and socioeconomic development.
So when we got back from South Korea last July, we realized right away that we needed to test uh, doing an actual pop-up market on a smaller scale before bringing it to an international stage. We've been working for eight months now uh, towards this goal of having a small pop-up market here at the University of New Mexico. The folk art market here at UNM was conceived of after going to South Korea as a response to okay, we need a physical test market, some sort of proof of concept. It's like in statistics, you know, you take a little bit sample first, right? Before you put a lot of uh, time and energy and money and all your effort into a big one. So building this miniature pop-up market is going to give us a lot of the experience that we'll need in terms of the logistics that it actually takes to put on one of these markets. I guess what really with this market, we're seeing where problems lie in the market that we're designing and seeing what about the market do people respond to and what don't they. And then we also, with this market, need to take into consideration what about the culture of UNM and the students here uh, might be different from when we're in South Korea and what sort of cultural considerations do we need to make. We're actually pretty fortunate to be able to start here at UNM because art is pretty big part of the economic culture in New Mexico. One of the reasons why New Mexico is an ideal location for the pop-up market is because New Mexico has such a large proportion of its population involved in the arts. We still have these folk traditions alive in New Mexico in terms of our Native American artists, but also our Spanish colonial artists as well. And I think we're very diverse and we embrace <laughs> these um, types of arts and community and we value tradition, we value heritage, and I think that it makes it a really safe space to have one of these folk art markets. The university has a, a really beautiful mix of a lot of different people and from a lot of different backgrounds in the same way that you would have if you were working in an international setting where you have people from all sorts of different walks of life. So I think it's a good sort of practice run. An important part of putting on this market is learning how much we really are just going to have to rely on other people and other partners to help us put it on. For example, with this pop-up market that we're working on right now, we're working with a different student organization called Engineers Without Borders, and they have the expertise that we need regarding how the structure is actually going to build. So when Engineers Without Borders first got involved, we were approach to just build a pop-up market and after talking with WFAM and looking at a bunch of different models of pop-up markets, we, just, we settled on a geodesic dome. For the engineering side, making sure the structure can support its own weight and support the um, canvas that WFAM is covering it in. And then with the architectural side, it sort of makes me think about um, how to make it aesthetically pleasing and something that people would want to approach and see what's inside. So inside of the dome is going to be folk art from all around the world and, and from our community. It's just important that people have access to folk art and I don't think that there's really a lot of opportunities for people to, to interact with international folk art and especially at a university level I think this is a really formative time where people are exploring different cultures and learning to become more globally engaged citizens and it's important that we provide students access to having those opportunities. So I think the folk art market really brings that to students. The reason you should come to the WFAM pop-up market on April 28th is because it's a way to not only learn about these uh, wonderful artists and their traditional cultures but it's also a way to get involved in the world folk art movement and, and to be a part of this movement that proves that art saves. Art saves lives, art saves traditions, um, art saves communities. Thank you.